Hey guys, so this video is on solution concentration, the concentration of a solution. Um, so basically what we're going to do in this video is look at different ways of calculating or, or talking about the concentration of a solution. Um, constant, um, so a solution, first of all, consists of what's called the solute and then what's called the solvent. Um, real basically the solute is whatever is being dissolved and the solvent is whatever is doing the dissolving and the solution is the com is everything combined the solute or solutes if there's more than one and the solvent now we're going to talk about physically what happens in this process in a later module and once we do it's this definition will, will make even more sense hopefully so the first unit, guys, of concentration we're going to start talking about here is one that we use a lot in chemistry called molarity. The symbol for the molarity is a capital M, case is important, and the definition, the molarity of a solute in a solution is equal to the moles of the solute divided by the volume of the solution in liters. In symbols, M is equal to N over V. Um, and so that means if you need to calculate the molarity of a solution, then you need to know two numbers, the moles of the solute, the liters of the solution. Um, also notice, guys, this is a, a simple algebraic equation with three variables. If we know any two of these, we can solve for the third. Um, a real common way to use molarity is if you know the molarity and the volume, M and V, of a solution, then you can find quite easily the number of moles of the solute. We'll see that in an example. Um, notation. So if you see the formula for some compound, I put X here, but it could be like H, you know, like, I don't know, HCl or whatever. Um, in square brackets like that, that's shorthand for saying the molarity. Or we say concentration, but we really mean molarity. Molarity of whatever X is. The molarity of hydrochloric acid or whatever. So that's molarity. Um, let's do an example. Um, so we're asked to calculate the molarity of potassium chloride that's in a solution that's prepared by dissolving 49.229 grams of potassium chloride in enough water to make 275 mils of solution. So first of all, from the words, we're dissolving the potassium chloride in the water. So the potassium chloride is the solute, water is the solvent, and the solution is everything combined. Um, physically, the way we would do this is we would... Um, take a container that has a mark on it that tells us um, you know, where 275.0 milliliters is, we would add a, some, you know, about half full of water, dump the um, weight out, weigh out the potassium chloride, dump it in, rinse, rinse off the transfer container, then dissolve the potassium chloride with the uh, container about you know, half full of water. Once it's dissolved, then we would carefully bring the solution, the volume of the solution up to the mark with deionized water. Um, the, the reason I'm telling you that is that um, when you make solutions like this, sometimes, not all the time, um, just because you add 275 milliliters of water doesn't mean you end up with 275 milliliters of solution um, because the interaction of the solute with the solvent can change. A lot of times it does change the volume of the solution. So what we do not do, guys, is we do not measure out 275 milliliters of water, then add it to 49.229 grams of potassium chloride, because the volume might not be 200, probably won't be 275.0 mils. All right, so having said that, we want to calculate the molarity. So remember, the brackets mean molarity. The molarity of potassium chloride, this is the definition, moles of the solute, potassium chloride over liters of solution. Um, so to get the moles from the grams, as always, we just divide by the molar mass. So this number right here, 74.551, where that came from is I calculated the molar mass of potassium chloride by adding up the molar mass of potassium, 39.098 grams per mole, and chlorine, 35.453 grams per mole. Um, so when I do this division, I get 0.660339 moles of potassium chloride. That's my top part, my numerator. Now, liters of solution. Because in chemistry we go back and forth between milliliters and liters so often that it's we just kind of do it in our head. Um, it's really useful if you remember that if you have milliliters and you need liters, all you do is move the decimal three places to the left. If you have liters and you want milliliters, move the decimal point three places to the right. All there is to it. 
So 275.0 milliliters will be 0 0.2750 liters. There's our liters of solution, divide the two numbers, and we get 2.401 molar potassium chloride. So a couple things, that's the way we say that. We say the concentration or the molarity of potassium chloride in this solution is equal to 2.401 molar. And it's a capital M that stands for the molarity. All right, let's do the next one. Um, this is also dealing with molarity. Um, now, in this case, we have a solution. We know its volume, 44.3 mils, and we know its molarity, 0.7445 molar. Now, what we want to do is find out how many grams of the solute, which in this case is rubidium chloride, we have in our solution. So the idea here, guys, is that whenever we do this so much, okay, whenever you see these two kinds of numbers, a molarity and some sort of volume, in this case it's milliliters, it doesn't matter. Molarity and volume, really that's just another way of saying moles because, remember, molarity is moles over liters. So if we know the volume and we know the molarity, rearrange this, we get the moles real easily. So the idea here is that we want to get the grams. Well, seeing the volume and the molarity tells us that we really we can get the moles quite easily. And then once we know moles, then it's just a quick shot to grams because that's the molar mass. So if we take the moles of rubidium chloride that we get from our volume and molarity, multiply that by the molar mass of rubidium chloride, grams per mole, we'll get what we want, grams of rubidium chloride. All right, so first the moles. This is the, the molarity, which we're given in the problem, 0.7445. Remember, the big M means moles per liter times the volume. Again, I moved the decimal three places to the left. I got 0 0.0443 liters, liters canceled, and I have 0 0.033, you know, 298 moles of rubidium chloride. Take that and multiply by the molar mass. So again, this number right here, guys, 104.466 grams per mole. The way I got that is I added up the molar mass of rubidium from the, you know, from the periodic table, plus the molar mass of fluorine, and I got this number. The moles cancel and I get the answer, 3.45 grams of rubidium chloride in this solution. All right, so the next unit of concentration we're gonna talk about is called molality. You gotta be really careful, there's only one letter difference. There's an L instead of an R, and the symbol is a lowercase m instead of a capital M, so you have to be really careful about um, case here. The reason, okay, so, Sometimes it's useful to talk about molarity. Sometimes it's useful to use molality. The good thing about molality is it does not change with temperature. So if you think about it, okay, we'll go back to molarity. Moles of solute over liters of solution. Well, if we heat, take a solution and heat it up, the moles of the solute aren't going to change as long as we don't dump any out. But because volume changes with temperature, as we increase the temperature of that solution, its density um, is probably going to decrease and it's going to change the, the volume. So higher temperatures, lower density usually. Um, and so the molarity would actually change. But molality does not change with temperature because it doesn't matter what we do to it, as far as temperature goes, the moles don't change and the kilograms, the mass of the solvent doesn't change. Anyway, so that's why it's useful. And we'll see this coming up, popping its head up in um, a few other places throughout the course. So, definition of molality, moles of the solute over kilograms of the solvent. Now, watch out. Molarity is, was, the, the top was the same, moles of the solute in the numerator. In the denominator, though, in the molarity, we had liters of solution. In molality, we have kilograms of solvent. Different. All right, so, example, we want to calculate the molality of ethanol in a solution as prepared by dissolving 249 milliliters of ethanol. And I give you the formula and its density in 774 grams of water. Water is the solvent. The solute, which is being dissolved, is the ethanol. So we need the moles of the solute, the kilograms of the solvent. Well, the solvent's water. And again, just like with milliliters and liters, if I have grams to get kilograms, I just move the decimal three to the left. So I basically have the kilograms of solvent already. All you have to do is get the moles of the solute, which is ethanol. Well, to do that, if we take the density times the volume, we can get the mass of the ethanol. Once we know the mass, we know we can really easily get the moles just by dividing by the molar mass. So this number here, guys, the way I got this is this is the molar mass of ethanol, C2H5OH. I just added up the molar mass of two carbons, six hydrogens and one oxygen, and I got that number. 
So now that I know how many moles of ethanol I have, I divide that by the kilograms of the solvent, and I see that this solution is 5.51 molal. So the way we say this is the molality of ethanol in this solution is 5.51 molal, M-O-L-A-L. -L. All right. Parts per thousand, parts per million, and parts per billion. That's what these stand for, PPT, PPM, PPB, or parts per thousand, parts per million, and parts per billion. And they're all very similar. Um, the per percent really is the same, too. So, um, you, uh, by the way, you'll see these units a lot in, um, like, water reports. If, if, you, if you have a house or, or, and you see, you see a water report from the city, it talks about... Um, the, all, the, all the stuff that's in your drinking water, and it, sometimes it uses these units. It uses all kinds of units, which is kind of bizarre, but that's what they do. All right, so parts per thousand is the mass of the solute over the thousand, a thousand parts of the solution. Now, this could be any unit of mass, but because we use grams, it's easier just to talk about grams here. So think about parts per thousand as being grams of solute over thou per thousand grams of solution. Parts per million is grams of solute per million grams of solution. Parts per billion, grams of solute per billion grams of solution. Remember, 1,000 means times 10 to the 3rd, 1 million is 1 times 10 to the 6th, and a billion is 1 times 10 to the 9th. So that's, you know, these three units here. Um, so let's say um, we have 122.3 grams sample of drinking water, and it's found that it contains 75.2 parts per billion of dichlorobenzene. How many grams of dichlorobenzene is that? Well, real easy. All we do is we kind of plug into the definition of parts per billion. We know we have 75.2 parts per billion. What that means is there are 75.2 grams of dichlorobenzene per billion, 1 times 10 to the ninth grams of solution. And we know how many grams of solution we have, um, 122.3, the drinking water sample is the solution. So multiply by the grams of solution, and that cancels. We get 9.20 times 10 to the minus 6 grams of dichlorobenzene, or 9.20 micrograms, same thing. And that's, that's all there is really to parts per thousand, parts per million, parts per billion. And finally, guys, a really useful equation called the dilution equation. Um, C1V1 equals C2V2. Definitely memorize this, put it on your card. What this says is you add, well, let me back up. Where this equation is applicable, which is the important thing, is when you already have a solution and you're diluting it. Well, what that means is you change the amount of solvent. Usually it means adding more solvent, but we could you know, evaporate some solvent and take some solvent away. That's when this applies, the only case where this applies. So what this says is the concentration before the dilution of that solution times the volume that you have before the dilution is equal to the concentration you have after the dilution, C2, times the volume that's present after the dilution. So with the with calculations involved in this, it's really important to keep your C, your 1s and your 2s um, lined up. You know, you know which are the 1s and which are the 2s. So for example, let's say we have a solution of cobalt 2 chloride um, that's 0.922 molar, and we have 233 milliliters of it, and we're um, diluting that to a total vinyl volume by adding some deionized water to 1.74 liters. What's the final, what's the concentration, what's the molarity? So here, we're given a molarity, and a volume, and another volume, and we're asked to find the new molarity. Um, by the way, guys, this, the C concentration, applies to any unit of concentration. It could be molarity, molality, parts per thousand, parts per million, parts per billion, or any other unit of concentration. Um, so, what I find, what I really recommend with this is to list what you know first. You know, what's C1, what's V1, and so on. Um, be real careful with your, your subscripts, your 1s and your 2s. Then, take the dilution equation, figure out which of these variables you're asked to solve for. Do the algebra, solve it. So, in this case, we're asked to find the new molarity after it's diluted. So, that's C2. So, I divided through by V2 on both sides, and I got this equation right here. I listed what everything is, so the concentration before dilution is 0.922 molar, the volume before it's diluted is 233 mils, the volume after, our V2, is 1.74 liters, and I just moved the decimal three places to the right, and I got 1,740 mils. 
um, worried about units of volume here. It doesn't have to be any special unit of volume. It can be anything as long as both volumes are in the same units. Milliliters, liters, quarts, bushels, what have you. It doesn't matter. Anyway, so now that I know what everything is, I plug it in. Units of volume cancel, and I get my answer. 0.123 molar. And well, that's all there is to it, guys.